Hello again. I hope you're doing at least okay wherever you are on our great planet. I have two of probably the most interesting 22s that I've ever come across in my collection, um, as well as a couple of others that are more routine. I guess I should have said three more. Um, I'll start with this one. Uh, you, some of you, you know, are far more advanced collectors than I am, and this is a a Savage 1912 and I say that hesitatingly because it should be a Savage 1912 and I guess I've had you know maybe a couple of these over the years as far as I remember um, a very unique semi-automatic you can see how compact the action is uh, the action return spring is under the fore end it's in a housing and the housing is very thin. So actually when I received this rifle, um, it didn't work because the, the return spring was making contact with the housing. And a return spring, in case you don't know, is just a long spring that causes the bolt to fly back forward after it's pushed back by the, by the 22 shell. This is a blowback operated weapon and it's an excellent aperture sight here which you can see it has a, a full trigger which reminds me a lot of the Colt um, 1911 pistol. Um, the magazine says Savage automatic long rifle only Savage Arms Company actually it says April 28th 1908. Um, the function of the action is unremarkable it's all steel and walnut there's a bolt hope hold open device on this rifle you push the operating handle down and when you push it up the action closes um, typical magazine i think it might be seven shots or ten i forget now it stays open because the magazine is empty so that's a handy feature um, we've got some interesting you know sling swivels at first I thought that this was for some other purpose but I it looks like a sling swivel so so does this there are you know two holes drilled on either side of the barrel which I've seen before it's not in any way a bad feature there's plenty of strength and room for the bore and 22 pressures We've got some unusual screws in the forehand, which some of you would say are not original. Typical safety in the back, straight grip stock. Um, so, I mean, it's a pretty special rifle in the first place, just because it's so old. And I, we, you know, we took it up in the mountains and it runs okay, um, but it, it, you know, there's still an issue with that return spring. But I do believe it can be made to run perfectly again. But here's the twist to this, and you know, collecting is endlessly interesting because one is constantly investigating clues that are on the firearm. And in this case, I purchased this along with the one I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. And I thought I was getting a, a Savage 1912, so I expected all of the regular markings. And, and regular sights, and this one has a filler for the rear sight, but that's actually not the case. This has the action of the Savage, but the barrel is marked Flussstahl, Krupp Essen, caliber with a K, K-A-L, 22 long rifle, and as everybody knows, we mark our 22s with C-A-L, CAL-22 long rifle. I found no evidence of any markings from Savage except for that magazine which I read you. On the bottom of the action are four numbers. There's no model designation. There's just that simple serial number. We've got the sling swivels here and I guess there used to be something here. And then an unremarkable steel butt plate which you probably recognize. So I mean all the clues are that this, I would guess, unless you know better, and you probably do, is a savage action that maybe was sent to Germany in those early years, turn of the century, and they put a barrel on in Germany. Or maybe they made the whole thing, but I 
find that hard to believe because it's very similar to the to the savages I had before. Anyhow, um, we'll try to get this out again and and shoot it for you. But this is a one of those high value, high demand 22s, and especially with these unusual markings. Essen is a city in Germany, in case you didn't know, and Krupp is an industrial giant. Uh, they probably still exist. And they, um, you know, it's a steelworks, but they diversify their into everything. And the aperture site um, is, it, this is a complex, beautifully made site. And the times we fired it, quite accurate. Anyhow, so that's one. Uh, but you know, if you're looking it up, and people do a lot of research apparently after they watch my videos, uh, Savage 1912 is what it would come up as. You'll you'll recognize this because it looks very similar. But there's a lot more that I can learn over time, maybe with your help on this one. So the next one, uh, you may have seen these before, and I called a couple of my collector friends who just are obsessed by this particular rifle it's commonly known as the Savage uh, sorry Stevens visible loader and no one can really tell me whether it's a model 65 or model 70 maybe some of you can I mean again it's very compact you can see because of this gap here that it's not a semi-auto and there's this big knurled bolt um, it could be a replacement but again there's more to this story that you'll learn in a moment that may well be original but here's the cool thing about this about this rifle so you move the and there you can see the round so these, these are dummy rounds people often get alarmed about things but it's just a dummy round there's no powder or anything it it looks loaded but it's not so you close and you fire and and, and it throws it out and then fire and throws it out <clears throat> the way it sits there um, is really behind the name whether it's a model 65 70 or what have you I don't know but most people know them as a visible loader anyhow much like the 1912 what exactly this is I'm not sure because on the top of the barrel it says um, Coop S and Laufstahl and caliber KAL 22 long rifle um, on the bottom of the tang it just has Y and then three numbers for the serial number it has the same see the holes in the barrel where a sling uh, used to be and instead somebody built this this little floating sling swivel it's actually quite well made quite cute and it travels with the slide so you can see how that that works and everything else about it is visible loader it also has the aperture sight um, this one works perfectly there's there there's no uh, failure to fire no failure to feed and the bore is excellent actually the bore is excellent in both of these which is often the case I mean there were a lot of 22s that were wrecked by black powder but these two are both um, are fine so I'm assuming that smokeless powder was used or people clean them. Anyway, it's not kicking out that one, which I noticed it does, um, even if I'm rough with it. So it may be that there's something with the extractor, but it always does that on the last um, round, not on the others. So maybe there's a meaning there. And there are some screws and so on. Again, um, if you can find these in virtually any condition, uh, these are definitely either keepers or money makers. They're just um, so unique. Uh, and people will tell you it's not a great design, you know, mechanically speaking. Uh, but in the collecting world, whether the gun works perfectly or as well as a modern gun or what have you, that's actually immaterial. It's much like art of any kind. It's what you see in the mechanism and in the design and it's nice if it works perfectly but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't and that doesn't preclude people from using them either um, you know if we were strictly motivated by efficiency well, this would be a pretty dark way to be um, so next one this is totally modern uh, uh, some of you wrote me and said what about the Winchester model 77 
great point. So I have a couple. Uh, operating handle, bolt handle on the left side. I always like that. That's a good way to operate. Uh, slanted magazine. Um, these aren't that hard to find. 22 long rifle. Oh, I should say the semi-auto feats long rifle and the little pump action. Um, it, it works with all three, short, long and long rifle. Uh, again, model 77, beautifully made, 22 by Winchester. I don't know the years of manufacture, but again, they were popular. They've got kind of, I would say, futuristic look. Uh, they, they change hands, you know, in this condition for maybe $300, but I'm reluctant to say prices these days because inflation and demand for the used rifles is so high um, I think partly because the new rifles are just don't offer the same quality as the older rifles uh, just about any older rifle you know has some kind of lasting value with these plastic guns not so much so anyway Winchester model 77 uh, this is one of those cool guns this one is a 7H, I think it's a Stevens. Yeah, no, it's Savage. Uh, Savage and Stevens are often, I get them confused. It's a, it, it has a bit of a gill gun look. You can see there are some cuts here. Uh, and there's, there are two there, I guess, and here's one. This, this makes it uh, easier for the action to actually dump a lot of the burnt powder. So they run for a long time. This one is short, long, and long rifle. I'm not sure whether they accomplished that with a, fo a floating chamber or not. Naturally, a uh, long rifle has a lot more power, so you would think that a short would not have enough power to operate the mechanism. Um, I'm always moving too quickly for filming on these, so I try to slow myself down. Uh, anyhow, this one works uh, flawlessly with all three. You can load them interchangeably. And if you decide that you want to use it as a single shot bolt action, you just push the bolt in. Um, I'll show you how that works. There's a recess here. So you just um, push the bolt handle in and then I, I close the action now. And if you want it to fire, see these two recesses. So one is bolt hold open and one is bolt lock. So you just push this in. Maybe you want to watch that. So that's locked. And then uh, that's very nice, um, especially, you know, most of the time I don't necessarily want to make a lot of noise. Uh, so when I push this in, it's very quiet. Uh, when the action opens, you do get more, you get more noise. Um, anyway, that's uh, very cool. And there are many variants of these that people know and it says right on the barrel, shoots 22 long, uh, short, at long rifle, and so on, patents applied for. Uh, so that one you could research as well. And then the last one, and the, by far the most expensive, and actually quite rare, is the R9322. So you probably know the Blazer R93 straight pull. You can see how the mechanism works there. It has a locking collar. Uh, the essentially flanges of, of metal fold and unfold and lock the action. Very strong. The R93 was superseded by the R8 now, which I actually have be behind me. Anyway, for practice, for a limited period of time, Blazer offered this 22 version, so it's really cool. It has the magazine sticking out the side. Not many of these were sold. Um, I have a friend in the UK that has one of these in 17 HMR and apparently they made a 22 Magnum as well. I've never seen these. I, only 20, 22. In fact, this is the only one I've ever seen in 22 is, is my own rifle. Um, exceptional accuracy, probably the strongest action. I think it still locks by means of that collet, pretty sure. Um, I, I think, I, I don't know what it would take to get this to fail. Uh, beautifully accurate and um, I, it came with a couple of magazines, you know, in a typical blazer box, in case you don't know the operation, so that's uh, ready to go and it, it doesn't damage the firing pin. 
and to reload just that if you don't want to shoot you push this forward now it's completely safe then you want to shoot you push this forward and you're ready to go and I put on a four power what it is Diatal C Zeiss West Germany so you can tell it's an old scope I like them because they're still compact um, and then a lot of scopes became you know blimps huge and <laughs> this is still pretty convenient we did make it into the mountains with uh, with the little Savage or Krupp rifle and we also shot the um, R93 and and the Savage uh, just the the uh, little semi-auto short long long rifle 7h I think you'll find it interesting especially how this little rifle um, runs is is quite a something and um, anyway I hope you like that footage That's pretty clean. I will film from the other side, you can see it ejecting. So here we go again, uh, mainly doing this so that you can see how the action works from the opposite side. So everything is straightforward, that's in. This is the coolest part, the way it feeds. I mean, it makes sense actually, gravity is on your side like this. I think there's a uh, more famous rifle, the Girat or something like that, but Anyhow, here we go. I mean, that's a pretty slick <laughs> rifle to own. Uh, like I said, if you can find one, I, I would I would buy it on the spot. So, in stark contrast to the. Blazer R93. Here we have a, a Savage 7H. Uh, I'm no expert, but it's it's a lot of fun shooting this, uh, particularly because this actual specimen doesn't seem to like jamming. Also, when I shoot, uh, take note of the slight delay. It's like a delayed action. I'm not sure how they accomplish that, but we'll just shoot it a few times, and um, this is just so you can see it functioning. And it can do that all day long. Just uh, actually, I had a target in the tree, but unfortunately, the first shot removed the target. So the rest I just fired so you could see it working. Anyhow, um, yeah, we have a lot more 22s to show you, but I think the next video is going to be on savages. Any, I, that's a lot to digest on one video. Uh, like I said, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well and um, take care between now and then. We'll, we'll meet again soon. Take care.